Today we're going to be exploring the phenomenon of thermal acoustics. We've got what's called a hoot tube, a heated oscillating open tube. The other name would be a Rike tube, R-I-J-K-E tube. Essentially what it is is a open tube. We're going to add a metal mesh in probably the bottom third here and then we're going to turn it up like this, heat the metal mesh, and then when we pull that heat away, the metal mesh is gonna cause the hot air to start rising through the tube, making it resin. We're gonna see what sound this makes. We've got two other options here. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, we're here at the University of Utah Physics and Astronomy Department with Adam Beeler. We're gonna be looking at some experiments today. What are we looking at? These are two uh, electricity demonstrations we use. I'm the lecture demonstration specialist here, which just means I manage all the equipment to help teach in these lecture halls and classrooms. From the painting, J. Irvin Swigert, he was one of the first professors here that used to teach a lot with demos. And these are two of his favorites. We're gonna show you those real quick. This is called a Wimshurst machine. Uh, it's an electrostatic generator. It's got two counter rotating wheels. Brush. Long story short, inbounds and charge, the brushes, they rub, it, it collects through these. It goes into these Leyden jars, which is a fancy word for like, like beginning capacitors, and it'll separate the positive and the negative. You go ahead and rotate the counter wheels here. This is literally miniature lightning. Charge builds up in the clouds. The difference in charge between the clouds and the ground until it's big enough to whammo! Right. Touch both sides at the same time. Right now? Yeah. Ah! Have you ever accidentally shocked yourself? Oh yeah. This is a gold leaf electroscope. Anytime you separate two materials, this now has an excess of electrons. It likes them more than that. Well, if you bring it near an electroscope, it's gonna sense that charge. See, I, have, I haven't even touched it. It's affecting the charges on it. The gold leaf is really light. This piece, it's at least 100 years old. If I touch the grounding wire and touch the top here, that charge that was on it now had a place to go through me into the ground and now it's discharged. So the reason we went down to the U is because I had a really great experience there about a little over a decade ago. I went to school there. In that class, we had Dr. Adam Beeler, um, who we've met with and obviously shown us some really cool stuff today. He was the one teaching or showing all of the demonstrations for those uh, physics principles that we were learning in that class. We will have them meet about in the middle. So that should be able to sandwich our mesh pretty well at about six inches. So now we just need to cut some circles out of our galvanized chicken wire and push them together with these rods. We're gonna use this as a template. We'll mark around five different circles here. We'll cut them out and then we'll shove them into the tube. I might do more than five. I grabbed some scissors. They're gonna cut this chicken wire a lot better. Okay, one. I decided to go with 10 rather than five. Three. Oh, four, seven, nine, oh, ten. Okay, now here I'm just gonna sandwich together these pieces onto this bolt so that they stay as one. And also the bolt's gonna be a really good container for the heat. When we heat it up, which is again why we're using all of these layers, we're hoping that it retains the heat but still allows for airflow, making it so that it lasts for longer when we do heat it up and do the experiment. Could be that that just melts the pipe. That'd be fun. I'm just getting them as centered as I can. It's not gonna be perfect. They're likely gonna bend as I'm pushing them in. And that's okay, I want that pressure which is why I also measured around the outside of the tube versus the inside. Number one, easier. Number two, because I want that pressure fit. I want these to bend as I'm pushing it in so that it stays in there, grips the, the edges of the pipe. Now in doing research for this video, I discovered something called thermoacoustic refrigerators, which is crazy cool. It's something that NASA uses this technology to, I don't know, they've made a refrigerator for space that uses sound
sound waves to cool down the refrigerator somehow. That's crazy to me. And this is locking on there really good. I think that hand tight's gonna be fine, so it's gonna contain everything for the most part, but I will lock this down real quick. I know a true handyman would probably never use this for anything work-related, but I actually really liked it when I was doing that. <laughs> This, I don't need that. Let's go with this guy. Ideally, what we're gonna do is we have 18 inches here, six inches here. Okay, now that it's to size, we're gonna get it in there and placed in the proper spot. I've bent this at our 18 inch mark, so that's gonna be what we rest against after it's been pressed down into the tube. There we go. So I'm just heating up this element here, heating that up. See, it's just not audible to the human ear. I can hear it if I'm going real close to it, but it's not gonna be audible on the camera. So the little one didn't work. Yeah, it must've had too high of a frequency to be audible to the human ear. I need to find the length for this. So internal diameter is two inches. And whoa, 49, that's so perfect. 48 inches to the holes. Let's go ahead and cut out some mesh. All right, I'm just cutting out the mesh for that acrylic hoot tube. Let's go ahead and measure this. I'm gonna make sure I get these washers on here for this part so that the bolt head doesn't slip through the mesh, but also because I want to have that extra material in there for the heat to stick to. One. Definitely not as bad as the last one, but I do still need to grind this off. First, let's try this one. Okay, you're gonna hear the resonance of the tube just based on heat, the heat that we're getting from it. Isn't that crazy? All right, guys. There's one more that we need to make. This is gonna be my favorite, I think. Three and a quarter inches. This time, we need a lot more of the mesh, obviously. We've got a lot bigger inner diameter. So I'm gonna get a sheet and I'm just gonna cut a strip of it off of my grinder and fold it over. And I'm gonna do about 20 thick this time. Take it as close to center as possible. Mark this. Much easier to see. Okay, are we ready? All right. Okay, I'll dump it out. And I'll get it back. Yeah. That's crazy because it stops the airflow. Heat's no longer rising. That's cool stuff. That was this long. I don't know, I didn't count. Editors though, thank you. If you like content like this, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and follow along for more. We'll see you in the next one.